Hey guys, this is the AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is checking the refrigerant charge and adding a little bit of refrigerant to a system that's just a, a little bit low on refrigerant, all right? Right now, uh, we're not connected yet. We have our king valve or our three position valves. Uh, presently, the stem is back seated, all right, all the way out, all the way out. That means that this pipe and this pipe are connected, but the port is not connected to it. Once you mid seat it a little bit, it's going to connect this side this side and the port okay if this was front seated all the way down then what you're going to have is this port and the line connected that's going to the uh air handler or evaporator coil those two are going to be connected and this this side that goes to the compressor will be disconnected all right that would be if it's front seated so all presently we are back seated we're going to mid seat it just a click or two in and that will give us refrigerant pressure out of the port so that's what we're going to do So, so there is no Schrader valves on this at all, okay? So that's why we don't have any pressure yet. All right, before we open them, let's just make sure our handles are all tight. All right, and, and now we're going to go clockwise. Try not to hit the gauge set. You got to give it a good amount of force, okay? Just in order to open these up. All right, so now we have our refrigerant pressure, okay? So the system's been running about 10 minutes. We have a temperature of 83 degrees, okay? That temp probe is on the liquid line down here, okay? Our actual pressure is roughly 290 PSIG. If we follow that in, we have about 94 degrees as a saturated temperature in the middle of the condenser coil. All right. So what we're looking for on the rating plate up top, all right, right there, it states 14 degrees of subcooling. All right, so 90, 94 minus 83, all right, and what we have is roughly, uh, or 83.5 is roughly 10.5 degrees of subcoin. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit. If it's calm for 14, I want to get it to about 15 degrees when we're all said and done. All right, so we're going to take our 410A bottle that's right here. We're going to connect our service line to it service hose and we're not going to open it until it's upside down all right so now we're going to zero the scale out so we know how much refrigerant we're putting in and now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna let the air out of the lines okay because we just hooked up a gauge set that had air in the hoses all right so we want to make sure we might as well go ahead and do this one too while we're at it right now all right so you just want to get the air out you really don't want to try to let any refrigerant out if you can uh, we just don't want air in the refrigerant system, okay? All right, so here we go. We're going to add a little bit at a time. We're going to zero this out again. Maybe the liquid was sloshing around in there a little bit, so we zeroed that out. Now we're going to go ahead and add our refrigerant. We have a liquid line vaporizer right here that helps turn the liquid refrigerant into a vapor uh, by having it go through a restriction. All right, so it flashes into a gas before going into the suction line and then into the compressor. You don't want liquid refrigerant going into the compressor. All right, so if you didn't have a uh, quick charge, this is an Imperial quick charge 535. Um, if you don't have one of them, you're just going to be opening 
the handle up just a little bit so there's like just a little bit of a restriction in here that will allow the refrigerant to go through but it's going to make charging um, the charging process take longer so we added three ounces of refrigerant. Now we're going to let it sit for a sec and see where we're at. All right, this pressure rose up a little bit. Okay, before it was at like, say like 93.7 degrees saturated. Now we're at about 94.2 degrees saturated temp. All right, our actual temp on the liquid line is dropping presently. All right. Presently we're at about 12 degrees of subcooling. We want to let it sit for a sec and just let the refrigerant cycle through the system in order to get an accurate reading on our charge. And normally we're gonna let that sit for just a little bit longer, especially when we're that close, you know, um, but in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, let a little bit more in. You want to give it a little bit of time. There's always something else to do, like filling out the service ticket or something like that. You know, you're going to write the model and serial numbers of the units down. Um, all the all the little stuff, you know. Now, during this process, I already made sure that our suction line temp was above freezing. You always want to make sure that that suction line temp is absolutely uh, above freezing, which is the pressure, the outer ring, followed into the pink ring, okay? This is 410A refrigerant, so that's denoted by the pink. All right, this gauge is the low side, and what you do is you follow the pressure in. It is 123 PSIG, and you follow that in, and it's actually at 41 degrees in the middle of the evaporator coil, okay? So that would be the indoor coil. This is the outdoor coil. This is the high side. That's the liquid line, okay? And so we're at 94.3 degrees saturated. We have a, a pressure of about 295 PSIG on here, okay? All right, and that has to do with the middle of the condenser coil. So you take the pressure, you follow it into the pink saturated temperature in the middle of the condenser coil, and that's what you have. You have 94.2 degrees in the middle of the condenser coil, all right? Then what happens is after it turns into a liquid, which will be like, say, like the bottom third down here. Um, so the bottom third in the coil, all right, as it then reduces in temperature, it's in its liquid state. It turns from saturated, which is liquid and vapor, to a liquid, and then the temperature decrease from there to where it comes out here. That's called the subcooling. All right. We're at roughly 81 degrees. We're at about 13 degrees of sub -core. That should be about it, it looks like. All right, so we have 95 degrees saturated right here. And we have, well, it's about 90, 94.2 or, or so. And then we have 79 degrees over here. All right, so we're at about 15 degrees, roughly. 15, 15 and a half degrees of subcooling, and that's going to be it, all right? The reason I wanted to get a little higher in subcooling, okay, um, if the if the subcooling was too low, the actual subcooling was too low compared to the target subcooling found on the rating plate, then you would need to add refrigerant. If it was over, uh, then you want to pull refrigerant out, but... The reason I'm getting it a little bit above the target subcooling is because you keep hooking your gauge sets up to it year after year, checking the refrigerant charges. All right, every time you do that, you pull a little bit of refrigerant out, but you shouldn't pull too, too much out because you're always putting your liquid back into your vapor line before disconnecting. All right, and you can check that procedure out in some of my other videos. All right, as long as you're within plus or minus three degrees of the target subcooling, and right now we're presently at 15 degrees to 15 and a half degrees subcooling when, we're, when the target subcooling is actually 14. All right, as long as you're within three degrees plus or minus, then you're good. All right, so, so that's that. All right, hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.